Hi, this is Daniel Franco with a and Maintenance. I'm very proud to uh, introduce to you Mr. Mark Warner from Environmental Solutions. He's going to explain to us how to set up a command center. All right, there are, we're going to break this training session down into several different components. Most important thing is starting off with a section that I call knowledge. The knowledge that's needed. These are the products that we're going to be working with. Knowing that they're the products, there is some homework we need to do before we deal with the dispenser. We need to know where are we going to set them up on this dispenser. You're going to receive a giant box like this for every dispenser. In the box, there is a smaller box. And a rack. Inside this box, you've got some componentry, which we're going to go over very closely, and the unit itself. So the reason why I'm pulling this out is because it's an unlabeled unit. So you need to know which of these five products are going to be hooked up to which of the locations on the dispenser. Once you know that, you have the ability then to hook the tubes up to the inductors on the inside. So, most important step, first step, is having your chart. And there will be also on the website. You can still get all the information you need just off the chart that's supplied. Although it's not personalized to the five items that you're working with, you can go down through it and find out which tips I need for which product. An example, we're running our 256 disinfectant at what dilution rate? Trick question, 256. <laughs> so now what we want to do is say, how are we, which tip do we use to run that 256? Well, the dilution rate that I need is 1 to 256. And to run it at a high flow rate out of the bucket, you know, with a high flow rate, it's going to draw very aggressively. It needs its own tip, which you'll notice on the chart says purple. Uniquely enough, on your personal chart, it says purple. When it comes out at the low flow rate, that's to fill a quart bottle. What happens if you try to fill a quart bottle at a high flow rate? Shower time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna bubble, it's gonna foam, it's gonna be very difficult to do. So at a low flow rate, it uses a different tip, and coincidentally, in this case, it's a light purple tip. We're gonna go over all that later. But the idea is to show you where you could get the information you need if you mischase, misplace your master chart. Now we know what products we're using, we know exactly what tips we need to use. So the next step is getting them set up. Best way to set up a unit is to set it up before you get on site. Now I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Well, so have you, Dan. Yes, I um, I can set them up by taking a box to a job site, pop it open and do it. But anyone who's done a bunch of these knows that you can do it 10 times faster and more efficiently if you set them up before you go out on site. If you have a work area like this and the tools handily to get it set up, you can go through a setup of a dispenser in about 10 minutes or less. Then when you get on site, all you have to do is tack it onto the wall. That's about five minutes. And that's a heck of a lot better than about four hours. Correct? But Daniel, you and I have done them on site. It's not as efficient to have a way to do it. So it's probably going to take more like 30 minutes to go through all this if you have to do it spread out in some hallway somewhere. So we're going to go through the setup here on the table. That make sense for everybody? What tools do I need to make sure I have with me? Well, the hammer drill is necessary when you're ready to install it on site. I need a clipper. The needle nose, right kind of needle nose has a clipper built into it. I bring a pair of scissors with me when I go. I carry with me an adjustable wrench. 
I can either do that or carry 452 wrenches to cover everything that this adjusts to. Screwdriver, the kind of screwdriver I carry is one that's got both Phillips and flathead, so I only have to carry one. When dealing with chemicals, what's important? Personal protective safety equipment. The other thing I carry along with me is tacks. These are special hose tacks. They're used to tack up the hoses onto the wall to make a clean installation. Simple zip ties. I need to have the tips that I'm going to be working with. I need to have the labels. Now I'm ready to go. Let's go over the installation itself. We have this unit. We've pulled the lid off. Inside the package, you saw that I got a lot of components. I'm going to put these components up here and go through all of them. One of these installations is a pretty sophisticated one, and that's that we use this disinfectant two different ways. We use it through a high flow rate going into a bucket. We use it at a low flow rate filling up trigger bottles. <laughs> what that means is I need to take a single hose out of this and figure out how to get it onto both sides of this dispenser, both the quart fill and the bucket fill. So, maybe most people would think I'm going to run two hoses right out of the jug. That's not how it works. What we do is we actually build a Y valve. They're simple to make. I'm going to build one for you right now very, very quickly. Inside the component bag, you will notice a couple of these, which are backflow preventers. And you'll notice these, which are the Ys. And I need to put all these together to make a Y valve. Essentially, I pull off approximately two inches of tube. Put the white end into that. And that goes on one part of the Y. The white end into that, how come the white end? It's a check valve, it only flows one way. You're out on site, you forget. Did Mark say the white one or the black one? Well, you're only gonna be able to suck through it one way check valve. So you be able to figure out on site that I've got to put the white towards the Y because that's what's heading towards the jet. 